July 1991, Cork City prepares for the arrival of a vast influx of people from all over the world to experience the thrills and excitement of the internationally renowned Cutty Sark Tall Ships Race. Although many months have already been spent in preparation for the event, activities are being heightened in the days prior to the arrival of the first craft. Amongst the earliest is Moonduster, a cork-based sloop skippered by Dennis Doyle, which is first over the finishing line on the 208-mile first leg of the famous race from Milford Haven in Wales to Cork. Small beginnings 21 years ago, when only 21 ships from 11 countries participated, the race now involves over 100 ships. The organisers of the event, which is sponsored by Cutty Sark Scots Whiskey, are the Sail Training Association, who see in the race a way of preserving the traditions of sailing and giving to young people the challenge of the sea. The origin of the name Cutty Sark dates from 1790 and means short skirt. It was made popular by Robert Burns' poem, Tam In 1890, a tea clipper was named Cutty Sark by her Scottish owner. By 1923, she was the sole clipper left afloat and a new high quality Scots whiskey was launched under her name. of Wednesday the 17th of July. The ceremonial flag raising signals the beginning of the activities for the remainder of the week. President Mary Robinson arrives at 12 noon to be welcomed by members of the various organizations who work together to organize this huge prestigious event. Representatives from the Cork Harbour Commissioners, the Cork Enterprise Board, Cork Corporation, Cork County Council, the Gardaí, the Tall Ships Committee and many others are on hand to greet the President and to accompany her as she visits some of the ships berthed on Custom House Quay. Her first call is the Irish training vessel, Asgard II which affords a great many young Irish people the chance of a lifetime to travel the world under sail. From the Asgard, the President moves to the Lord Nelson, which is one of a number of ships especially adapted to accommodate handicapped crew members. on a guided tour of his vessel, 
where the president and her husband sign the visitor's book and chat to some of the wheelchair-bound crew. The ship is fitted with lifts to enable such personnel to manoeuvre between decks. Huge crowds gather to give the president a warm, friendly reception on her tour. By this time, most of the ships have arrived, building up a carnival atmosphere which spreads throughout the city. Cove is also experiencing this atmosphere as one of the largest vessels, the Dharma Jersey, too big to venture upriver, berths at the deep water quay. While in harbour, the Dharma Jersey welcomes aboard the general public and the ship's crew find time to carry out repairs to the sails and to touch up the paintwork on this magnificent vessel. each boat is greeted by a liaison officer specifically appointed to look after the needs of the ship and her crew. The Cutty Sark Trophy is awarded to the ship which the others feel has done the most to uphold the ideals of the Sail Training Association. Last year's winners, the Anne's Crow, is met by its liaison officer, Sean O'Reardon, who outlines the facilities and activities available to the crew during their stay in Cork. Inter-crew matches and a variety of social events are arranged, and the public are welcomed aboard some of the ships. The crew's representatives attend the Lord Mayor and City Councillor's reception, while the rest of the crew enjoy the huge variety of entertainments around the city's keys. Cork's 96 FM County Sound, this is Neil Prendival coming to you live from the tall ships. Extravaganza will face you in North Jersey. continues into the small hours of the morning. Friday morning, and the Russian ambassador boards a speedboat for the journey downriver to greet the world's largest sailing vessel in Cove, the Sedov.
Meanwhile, the crowds around the city's quays are joined by thousands more weekend visitors where, despite the late hour's enjoyment, the crews are in fine form as they step out on their way to the prize-giving ceremony led by the pipe band of the Naval Services.
In keeping with the relaxed atmosphere of the occasion, Liam Kinsler of the Cork Enterprise Board opens the proceedings. Right Honourable Lord Mayor, may I ask you to please address Ship's Company. Friends of the crew, ships, 
spectators, fellas that haven't got out of the pubs, the rest here. <laughs> I'll be very brief. I'll have to stand up and this damn thing. The overall prize is this magnificent tantalus with six beautiful cork glasses and a bottle of puppy shark, which I know will be kept full every day of the week. Fortunately, the chap who's bought it, or won it, I understand, is not a key tokener, so this is very satisfactory. The first prize for the classes is Ireland answered to Columbus. Now, Columbus crossed the Atlantic 500 years ago next year, and we thought that we take a leaf out of his book because St. Brendan went across in a leather turret about 1400 years ago, and Tim Severn followed St. Brendan in 1976, so your committee decided that Ireland's first an early introduction into transatlantic travel in about the 6th century should be commemorated appropriately for the whole ship race. So we have a nice bronze sculpted by Mr. Maloney, or one of our own sculptors, and cast in Dublin. And I have it here, and I, it's so heavy that I'm afraid the Admiral may drop it on his foot. So there's St. Brendan crossing the Atlantic, and on that basis, I think we can get on with the project. Thank you very much. Would present the prizes for the Milford Haven to Cork Puddy Sark Tall Ships Race. The first prize is awarded by the race committee to a vessel which helped with the race communications, a prize donated by the Self Training Association, Greater Manchester Challenge. A prize awarded by the Race Committee and donated by the self Training Association for assistance in the organisation of the race, John Lang. donated by the Square Rigger Club, which might have gone to our sick lady, except, except that she has a whole armory of these already. So it goes to Regina Gamania.
prizes for Class C Division 1. Firstly, for the parade of sail, the prize donated by the Dole Ships Committee of Wales from Milford Haven, Jens Crow. A prize donated by Musgrave Cash and Carry, Asgard Ardo. for the first vessel to finish, and also first overall on corrected time, a prize donated by the Port of Cork Committee, Moonduster. The prizes for Class A, firstly for the Parade of Sail, a prize donated by the Tall Ships Committee of Wales, at Mil Milford Haven, O.R.P. Iskra. The final prize to be presented, first on corrected time in Class A, a prize donated by Musgrave, Cash and Carry, and also the Vicky Scott Memorial Prize, Indra.
thank you very much. Can I ask you all now to give three cheers for Right Honourable the Lord Mayor and the City of Cork? Hip, hip, hip. Hey! Hip, hip, hip. Hey! Hip, hip, hip. Saturday, the 20th of July. While the crews are preparing to depart, on Taoiseach Charles Hawhey is welcomed by the Chairman of Cork Harbour Commissioners, Mr. Conor Doyle. And we are very honoured to have with us this morning the Taoiseach, with the crowning glory on our week. Thank you very much for being amongst us this morning, Taoiseach. Uh, <clears throat> this room has seen very many historic occasions, but there must be little doubt that this is among the great moments of the Port of Cork. Let us all savour it and remember it for the rest of our lives. You're very welcome, all of you. Thank you for being amongst us. Thank you.
uh, Mr. Reynolds, my dad, and as a matter of fact, said, safety in cash in the bank is neither here nor there. But <clears throat> I just say publicly thank you very much. There is one other set of function I'd like to do today, and that is to commemorate your presence, and particularly the fact that you're going to fire the gun to send this fleet to the historic city of Belfast. And that is to mark the occasion with a little bit of fun that we have produced. Very close to initially along your island home is a creek from which apparently St. Brendan uh, departed. And he, with a number of other very moist monks, I gather they were like the first rotary club, <laughs> <laughs> departed and they ended up in Newfoundland and there he scratched some form of message there, which I even bumped along with along with graffiti. And, and Tim Severin, after uh, we all know the story, uh, enacted that voyage in 1976 in a leather boat built on the lines of with the currents that you know so well, but with uh, an oxide on ash frames and two baths. She was built here in Fork Harbor by Pat Lake, master shipwright in what is now Dennis Doyle's yard in Cross Haven. And we're celebrating Ireland's first and very early trip into transatlantic travel by giving you this uh, song of the Brendan and an enacting Tim Severin with Tim Severin steering her and some poor devil clinging to the boat. I don't drop it on your foot. I <laughs> <laughs> don't drop it on your foot because I'm in the phrase anyway. I'd find a strong wall and then you speak to hang on. <laughs> <laughs> Especially to congratulate the people of Cork uh, on this occasion. Uh, I cannot think of any other city in Europe, perhaps in the world, where an event of this kind could happen so suitably and so appropriately and with such style and with such flair. The people of Cork have that capacity. And, of course, the sea and ships and sailing uh, are at the very heart of this proud old city. You can see just opposite me there is Stasio Bene Fide Carinas, which is the motto of Cork City, and, of course, which emphasizes the part that the harbor and ships play in, in the history of Cork City. So I'm looking forward very much uh, to the day. I've already had the pleasure of uh, flying over to the harbor on the river uh, and seeing these magnificent ladies from the air and how splendid they look. Gra graceful, <coughs> colorful, great, great dignity about them. Uh, they remind us of all that great romance that used to be associated with children. Uh, and uh, they, they bring great, great joy and great happiness to this city and to this harbor. Uh, I think that nothing moves us, any of us more than to see a tall, stately ship uh, under sail uh, moving uh, graciously through the water, through the oceans. So, Chairman and Chairman and <coughs> Green Usually Hilla. I just want to say that I'm deeply grateful <coughs> to you all for affording me the honor of participating uh, in this great event, being part of it, and I want to thank you very much for your welcome. Again, I congratulate Cork City and the people of Cork on this great eventful happening, this great maritime event. Congratulations, and I hope we all have a wonderful day today, and as once again, we send these proud ships up the Irish Sea 
on the way to another friendly welcome in Belfast. Thank you all indeed. sound of St. Finbar's Pipe Band, Ascard II starts to lead the parade of sail downriver to Cove and then out to Roaches Point where the second leg of the race is to start. Crowds are lining the route to Cove in order to see this unique, magnificent sight. With the harbour from Monstown to Cove filled with every conceivable type of craft, from windsurfers and jet skis to Brittany Ferries, Britain, and the world's largest sailing ship.
an immeasurable amount of goodwill and treasured memories, the tall ships, escorted by thousands of well-wishers, ply the last stage of their cork adventure to head into the open sea and the race to Belfast with our best wishes for a safe journey. <laughs>